come to Canada, they said. It'll be fun, they said. Really wish I'd bought a snowblower. Hold on, I've got an idea. I'm going to send someone a text. And then obviously I've still got the the bits and bobs of welding to do, which is a good reason to get... Hold on a second. I've got a text message. Oh, it's a text message from future Dave. Weird. Hello, ancient Dave. Rude. Do me a favour, nip round to Home Depot and get a snowblower. I, I tried to get one today, but they, they don't have any left in stock. Okay. On it. So, I've got no idea if they've still got gasoline in the future, so I played it safe. I got an electric one. This is the Snowjo. Uh, it's got numbers after it. Hold on. The Snowjo 15 amp 22 electric snow thrower. Now obviously I can't test it right now, but I can at least make sure it's all there and plug it in, make sure it spins and makes noises. So we'll do that first. Right, let's see what's in this suspicious little light box. Certainly we can we can pick up a gas powered snow blower like that. Which means it's either going to be made from really cheap parts or high-tech graphite type parts. It's probably cheap parts, right? But the good news is that means it's going to be easier to store than a gas-powered snowblower. I can actually lift the whole thing up and put it on a shelf. Because as you probably know, I don't have a huge amount of storage space. Okay, I'm going to put this on the floor and lift it onto the table. Got some bits that need to be assembled. A fairly chunky instruction manual. One-handed. It's not that light, I'm, I'm just super strong. Right, let's see. Plastic. Knobs. Handles. Looks quite nice, actually. This particular model's got the LED lights in the front, which cost like $40 extra over the basic model. Yes, there is an even cheaper one. Oh, this costs $250 plus tax. And if it works, then that's an absolute bargain. The equivalent 22 inch gasoline powered snowblower probably starts about six or $700. So as I say, if it works, perfect. All right, let me whip this together and um, see how easy it is. <coughs>
Let's see what we have then. Assembly was fairly straightforward. There is a couple of niggles I do have with the instructions though, which I did refer to. If you look at this section here, it kind of implies that these two handle sections are already attached in the box, but they're not. And of course I put these, these big screws on the outside because I figured that makes more sense. But no, they go on the inside. I don't know why, but they do. The other thing it doesn't mention is you have to slide this clip over this bar before you attach it there. The instructions are kind of just, here's how it should look without really showing you how to make it look that way. And as you see there, the clip is showing, but it's not showing that you have to put that on first. It's a minor, a minor inconvenience, but just thought I'd let you know. This is fairly straightforward. This, this turns your spouty thing and it's just, it connects in there with a thumb screw, connects in there with a little cotter pin and you turn it and it does that. Fairly straightforward. These little clips here hold the wire in. And bear in mind this wire needs to be on the top side. If it goes on the bottom side and you fold this handle up, you're going to stretch that cable. So that cable needs to be above that hinge if you're folding it that way. Likewise with this one. So what else? The little um, poop shoot remover. This thing here, you just stuff that in there if it gets clogged up, which it probably will with wet snow. Clips on the side. All these things do feel kind of plasticky, but then they are plastic. The handle feels okay. Right, I'm going to plug it in, see what happens when I switch it on. Stand by, or stand back. And of course, make sure you, make sure you use the correct power cord. There's a little chart in the back shows you what you're supposed to use. Obviously, you want to use an exterior cord, something that's going to withstand all that horrible ice and snow. And it does have a big warning label. It's got a little chart in the back. So up to 50 feet, 15 meters, 14 gauge, and over 50 feet, over 50 to 100 feet, 12 gauge. So as I say, make sure you get the right cord. I, I have bought an extension cord to go with this, but it's not here yet. I do have a, a fairly heavy duty one just to test it in the garage. So let's do it. There is a switch at the back of the unit, which is like probably an arming switch to stop kids from just jumping on the, the handle and mangling themselves so you switch that on first plug it in fire it up see what happens power switch on Certainly not as noisy as a gasoline one. You need to tell me, did the lights come on? Did they all work? I think there should be three LEDs on each side. I'll need to check the video, but it looked like it was lighting up. My work here is done. Better send future Dave a text. Cool. Right, folks, I will see you when the white stuff starts to fall. Oh, well, I suppose I better dig out the snow shovel and get started. Oh, hold on, I've got a reply. Hello, future and much older, Dave. I decided to help you out in the future. Look behind you. Oh, look at that. It's a little Snowjo electric snow thrower. I wonder if it works. Some nice heavy duty cable. It's so small I didn't even see it tucked away in there. I guess we plug it in and give it a shot. Now, we don't have a huge amount of snow today, but there's no point waiting until you get six feet of snow before you 
before you shovel it away. Also gives a bit of a, a test. Make sure that the thing works even for thin stuff and then we can gradually work up to the heavier stuff, which I'll do at a later date, but let's get on with this. That was easy. Okay, first things first. The cable is a pain. I guess I'll get used to that. Obviously, you don't have that problem with a gas powered snow thrower. But for the price, apparently, because you know, I don't know that yet, I'll check the text. Now, nah, seriously, for the price, that seems to be really good. Not a lot of snow, but as you can see, no problem lifting it, throwing it well over onto the grass. You know what? I think I'll do the neighbour's driveway while we're here because that only took like two minutes. Yeah, quite excited. Let's see how we got on. Well, it certainly did the job it was supposed to do. Pretty effortless, but then again, it's pretty light snow to do. Whole job took up less than five minutes. Happy with that. However, there are some downsides. Let me explain. So the first thing, obviously, is the power cord. It's heavy duty, and in the cold weather, it's going to be even stiffer, so it just doesn't cooperate with where you want to go. It also has a tendency to pull out of the socket now and then when you're not paying attention to how much cord you've got. But you're going to have to expect that with any corded device that you're using. You know, same with an electric lawnmower, you're going to have the same issue. The other thing, you may have noticed that I was getting hung up on every little crack on the driveway. That's because it's kind of just like a, a snow shovel. At the bottom, you've got that flat shovel edge, but you don't have any guides. As you can see, the sides are higher than the actual shovel edge itself. So you've got to constantly adjust the height using the wheels to lever it back. So that's a bit of a pain, but not the end of the world. For the price point, 250 to $300 with tax, it's pretty good so far. Yes, it was light snow, but I'm going to make a habit of not letting the snow build up. Obviously, if it's snowing all night when you're asleep, you don't have that choice. But overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results so far. I will do a further review when we have deeper snow. Probably tomorrow, <laughs> we don't know. We're going to have snow for the next three months, so there will certainly be another update. Meanwhile, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this little review. And I'll see you on the next one. Thank you very much.